A seven and a quarter inch gauge sweep Williams steam locomotive part 12. I have shortened the stainless steel bolts without marking the bolt heads. This is also a good method for drilling and tapping holes in the ends of the larger bolts for smaller fixings. I modified the first two bolts in the last episode and they will be fine. Doing it this way is a much better way to do it. Especially when you're machining stainless steel that can be quite difficult to machine as it work hardens very quickly and gets hot. Here's a clip from the previous episode and you will notice that I've put the red cross in front of the clip which means do not do it like this. For this application, which is not a high tolerance part, it's actually okay. But in this episode I'm going to show a much better way of doing the job. To initially shorten the bolt you have a choice. You can either grip it in the chuck by the thread and end and part it off, which is the best way to do it. A word of caution though, if like me you are using stainless steel bolts, they are quite difficult to part off, need plenty of lubrication and you need to keep the tool moving. I chose the far more dangerous method, I use my bandsaw. But bear in mind it's only dangerous if you catch your fingers in the blade, and I choose not to do that. By using the bandsaw I don't really get a good finish at the end of the bolts but it's not important because very shortly I will be machining them in the lathe using a method that doesn't mark the heads. There are many different ways of doing this sort of a job, you could make a split collet, or you just could make a threaded collar. Luckily I already had some. I made them in the last episode. And before I go any further I'm going to reduce the thickness of these collars so that they are all exactly the same. The weight of the boiler is not just supported on these four collars. The centre part of the mountings, if you look back at the previous episodes, or just continue watching this one, are pieces of flat bar. You definitely need to spread the load when you're mounting such a heavy thing as this steel boiler, which should come back into the workshop in the early part of the new year. After I shorten each of the collars, I just touch the edge with a file, because don't forget, not taking the burrs into consideration, a 90 degree angle is extremely sharp. Look carefully at this clip, as I fit the shortened bolt into the sleeve, the bolt head is actually smaller than the sleeve or at least it is where I want to grip it on the flats. The first thing I need to know is how much to machine off these bolts to make them the correct size for the job, which is exactly three quarters of an inch from the underside of the bolt head. With the collar gripped firmly in the chuck, it's time to start the machining. The way to do this is down to the individual. You could cut longitudinally and make plenty of cuts, or you could, as I'm doing here, continuously face across the front until it becomes the right size, which is three quarters of an inch. In the home workshop, without coolant, stainless steel can be problematic. Whether you're turning or drilling, you need to keep the tools moving. If you dither or hesitate, you've lost. If you let the tools rub, the stainless steel work hardens very quickly and then just destroys the tool. Carbide-tipped lathe tools are not so bad but stainless steel just loves to destroy high-speed steel drills. For this job, I am using a lubricant. It's an aerosol can of metal cutting spray. It doesn't cool down the work very much, and as you can see, it's getting hot. The tapping operation needs to take place at a much lower speed. Well, it does in my workshop anyway. You've just seen me squirt it with the lubricant, and I get quite a good thread. And best of all, the tap doesn't snap off in the work. Here I'm finishing the job by facing the end to just clear any burrs, and then touching it with a file so I don't cut myself on it. While on the subject of files, just like in the previous episode, I need to file the angles. These pieces of angle are quite rough. It's not bright mild steel with accurate corners. And I need to file the inside corner square so they don't get in the way of the washers on the bolts. The filing job you've just seen was running at a high speed and there was a lot more of it, but I thought, well, I'll only show a little bit because it's very boring, very tedious and harder to do than you think. It's back over to the lathe now to make sure that all of the modified bolt heads are the same thickness. This is really easy to do with this gadget. It wasn't very expensive. It fastens onto the lathe bed and a magnet holds it to the saddle. 
All I had to do was just touch the lathe tool on the work, zero the digital readout, which made it very easy to turn all of the bolt heads to exactly the same thickness. These small DROs are very cheap and very useful. To make the bolt heads look better, I'm using a chamfer tool to chamfer the corners. And yes, you may have noticed there's a hole in the head of one of these bolts. I was a bit ambitious with the twist drill. But never mind, what I'm going to do is drill a hole in all of them. That way it looks intentional, but believe me it wasn't. It was total incompetence and I paid the price of having to do a bit of extra work. I now have a set of parts for a very heavy duty expansion system for this steel boiler. The bolts are stainless steel, they are not going to go rusty. But these parts will go rusty, so the thing to do is spray them with etching primer and paint them black. And in this clip on the bench on an old t-shirt, I am spraying them with etching primer. 99% of the time I wear t-shirts. Not just t-shirts, of course. I do have trousers and shoes and other things like that. I've decided to have a birthday party for my family and close friends. And the venue that I've picked for this is a really nice place in York. And I felt a bit hypocritical telling all my family that there is a dress code and they can't come in jeans and t-shirts. I'm sure they'll all make allowances for my age. I'm 70 in early January next year. After giving the pieces of steel angle a good coat of etching primer, it's time to move on and get ready to fit the smoke box. The first thing to do is to remove my temporary airline connector. And I can do this by hand because the seal is made by a piece of silicone rubber tubing inside. Here it comes. It bounced out of the fitting along the workbench and ended up on the floor. There are two things wrong with the smokebox saddle paintwork. Apart from it being badly chipped, it's matte black. And the smokebox is in HMG Paints satin black, which is almost matte with just a hint of satin. I removed any loose paint with some emery cloth and here I'm touching in the paint using etching primer. I'm going to paint all these parts black, but by using etching primer the black paint will stick much better to the steel. This final clip shows the etching primer drying on the smokebox saddle. In the next episode I will be refitting the newly painted smokebox and chimney to this saddle. Which will be good, because at the moment there are so many parts from this engine littered around my workshop, I keep falling over them. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.